Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friend, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and we are inviting you to pray with us at this moment. Let's pray. Go ahead. Father in heaven, we ask thee, please, Grant us thy indwelling of thy Holy Spirit. Amen. For without thee, we can do nothing. Amen. But we ask thee, grant that the Spirit of living God will be our teacher as we study your word. Amen. Bless those who will be listening, and grant that they too may comprehend the deep things of God Please. and prepare themselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we address our prayer to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary where Christ is our great high priest, a living high priest, who now intercedes for us. Lord, please teach us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, one of the things that most people like to drink in society is what? As a matter of fact, I hear many people water. saying that with every meal, I drink a glass of wine. Wine. Wine, right? I go traveling and... Everywhere on the tourist attractions, they have wineries. I can't understand it. Why? Wine, okay, but, but 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 let's see them. We talked about good wine. Uh, let's talk about the fermented wine. Uh, what does why does the Bible warn us about two wines? The wine of God we just found out about. Which in the previous program we saw mm -hmm. that that was the doctrines of Christ, the yes. scripture, scripture, the commandments, commandments of God, of God. Yes. all. The, which is brought to us by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. But the fermented wine. The fermented wine. Let's maybe, maybe because, let, let's make clear, mm -hmm. we don't believe that we should be drinking wine. The, the literal fermented wine. Fermented wine. Yes. So if we don't believe, because the Bible says uh, that that wine is, is make you drunk, not understand, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, or discern. Well, but you, do you know that the spiritual or uh, yeah, the spiritual wine, fermented wine, also can make people drunk, spiritually speaking? Yes, yes, and we're going to see Let's that. go ahead. Let's take a look. First of all, let's look at what the Bible says about wine. Mm. It, dulls, okay. it dulls the senses uh -huh. and confuses the mind. Okay, let's go to yeah. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Okay. Let's see what the Bible 20, says in Proverbs verse 20, one. verse 1. All right, let, let's go ahead and read it. Then. Verse 1 says, wine is a mocker, mm. strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now notice the Bible said wine, this fermented wine, is connected to deception. Mm. Now we know literal wine deceives the senses. Mm. Spiritual wine can deceive the spiritual senses and conception and interpretations that men come from the scriptures with. It's right. Mm. And so it becomes very important that we understand. But let's go a little bit closer. What else does the Bible say about wine? Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, mm -hmm. and wine unto those that be heavy of heart. Okay. So heavy heart of heavy hearts. Okay. Now, yeah. by the way, verse five is the one that is important for us today. Okay. It is in verse four and five. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. Mm -hmm. It is not for kings to drink wine. Okay. Nor for princes strong drink. Now, why does God tell the kings and the princes or the leaders? not to drink wine or strong drink. Verse 5 says, they drink, lest they drink and forget the law mm -hmm. and pervert judgment of mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. of the afflicted. Mm -hmm. Notice they will drink the wine, the wine of Babylon in this case. In Revelation 14, 8, it talks about the wine of Babylon. And in Revelation 18, 1 through 5, it's going to talk about the wine of Babylon again. Well, 17, 17, 17, one through five, oh, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. also But 17. Revelation 14 says, mm -hmm. and, the, and another angel followed them saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine mm -hmm. of the wrath of her mm -hmm. fornication. Right, right. Now, this Babylon is connected to two, two aspects, mystery Babylon and her daughters. In Revelation chapter 17, look what the Bible says, one of the reasons why God has got to contend with this power. 
In Revelation 17, 1, it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, mm. and I will show thee the judgment of the great horde that sit upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed what? Mm. Fornication, mm. and upon whom the heavens of the earth have been made what? Drunk. Drunk. Drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, we talk about the wine of wrath of God, but now what is the wine of this, mis of this woman, this harlot woman's fornication mm. in Revelation chapter 17? Yeah, maybe you should, mm -hmm. we should mention, we should offer this booklet today. Again, the Antichrist identify. I don't know if you can notice, there is a woman sitting, sitting on a beast and a, and a power, the nation, writing. A woman, remember, is a symbol of a church. This symbol, in this symbol, you see this woman being drunk. At the same time she's drunk, she's holding the cup of the wine. Revelation 17 says that she's giving that wine with the wine that is making her drunk, giving it to all the world too. So you can order this free booklet, um, free of charge, we'll send it to you. I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, no, you, you're right. One so, thing uh -huh. in verse in 17, it says that she committed fornication with the kings of the earth. Okay. And so this, the wine of the wrath of her fornication is the wine of the wrath of a church state system. The church committing fornication is, right. is, is joining with the state, the kings of the right, earth. Right, this is the unlawful union of church and state. Yeah. Now her wine, though, is dealing with doctrine again. Right. But that's because when the church joins with the state, the pure doctrine always gets uh, downgraded or polluted with false doctrine. Right, or now, gets replaced. I, I replaced. want you to notice too, and our viewers are up there too, that this wine is making people drunk. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, can a drunk person discern, have a good discerning? No. no. What, what do you have to do to get, to get into common sense? Have you seen people drunk, yeah. by the way? Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. I have to, right? Mm -hmm. Can they rationalize? Can you can you keep a, a good conversation with a drunk person? No. It uh, doesn't matter. It, you can tell them that this is a pain. A pain. Say, no, it's not a pain. I think it's a gun. Right? People mm -hmm. lose their senses. Yes, yes, absolutely. And right. likewise, in the spiritual matter, we have to make the decision. It's a decision. Uh, I'm sure many of us had to go through that decision to stop drinking this counterfeit wine, deceptions, traditions, in order for us to come to the senses, to, the, to our senses, and to see the beauty of the good wine. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you enjoy drinking a fresh, squeezed uh, wine made up of, of grapes? Yes. I mean... One time I was having meetings in some country in South America. I was invited to drink wine. I said, well, I don't drink wine. But the wine that they were offering to me, it was the fresh juice of, of grapes. When they explained to me what they were offering me, even though they were calling wine, mm -hmm. I said, please, give me the wine. Mm -hmm. And when they brought, brought to me the cup of fresh juice of the grape, I said, wow, this is good. Give me, keep giving me more of that wine. Let's, let's talk about wine for a minute. Let's see how the Bible teaches about wine for a moment. In Proverbs, in Psalms 4, 7, look what the Bible says in Psalms 4, 7. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than the time of their corn and their wine increase. Here wine is connected to gladness and, and joy. So there's a wine that is bringing joy and gladness, but there's another type of wine in Psalm 60, verse 3. Listen carefully to this one. Thou hast shown thy people hard things. Thou hast made us drink the wine of astonishment. So there's a, wine, there's a wine called the wine of astonishment. When you have studied, when God has made his people do what? To drink or to uh, show, when he shows his people hard things. But let's go a little closer. Can I and, read one? Yeah, go ahead and read one for us. Go ahead. Habakkuk 1 verse 15. Habakkuk 2 verse 15. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink 
that putteth thy bottle to him and maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Okay, and, okay. and so they lose their uh, spiritual garments. Mm -hmm. And there's a woe on those I wanted to bring out that, that serve alcohol, that give their neighbor drink. And so if people are working in the businesses that where they're, where they're selling alcohol, there's, there's a, they need to find a job that, that is, in God's sight, is clean. Well, let me, let me put the, yeah, that's true. But out, on this point, I want you to go back. Read that point again one more time. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, and maketh him drunken also, and thou and that thou mayest look on thy, their nakedness. Okay, now thou mayest look. Now Jesus gives a warning in Revelation chapter 3 and in Revelation uh, 16. Yeah. In Revelation 16, 15, what does Jesus say? Blessed are he that keepeth his garments, that the shame of his nakedness does not appear. Mm -hmm. The Bible is connecting that people become naked through the wine that they're given. Mm -hmm. The wine is representing doctrine. So people are being made naked by the doctrine that they're being taught or given by some of the churches. Mm -hmm. This is why it says Babylon has fallen. This is coming from the fallen churches. So there is a wine, there is some teachings, there is some doctrines that are making the people naked at a time when they need to be clothed with Christ's righteousness. Amen. This is what yeah. we see. The, the white garment is Christ's righteousness, and to be naked is to be in sin. Amen. Okay? Amen. But now look at In the, transgression of the law right. of God. I want you to look at this one. Now look, look for a moment. I want to show you something else, though. In Proverbs 9, 5, somebody read Proverbs 9, 5 for me, please. Because wine is also connected with bread, but it's also connected with a, or with a woman. The Pro bread, bread is connected to the woman and wine we connect to her. But read Proverbs 9, 5 for a moment. Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Okay, here, what type of wine did he have? Mingled Mingle. wine. That's a mixed wine. That's a wine with spices. It's not just, it's not fresh juice, it's mixed wine. It's, wine, it's like mixing rum and coke together or could, something could like that. Could that be maybe a mingling of part of God's word of and God's, tradition? Yes, part of God's word with tradition. Mm. All right? In Proverbs, um, listen, listen carefully again, in Proverbs 31, 4. I mean, I read Actually, this is a good wine here. Mm -hmm. It's a good wine. Okay, Proverbs. mixed wine there. Yeah. All right, but now notice you have a mixed wine that's good sound doctrine but you have a mixed wine that's made of false doctrines as well. Okay, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 31, let's read that together, Proverbs 23. Yeah. I want you to go there with me because I want to show you what the Bible says is going to happen. Okay, to re read the verse and then we have to make a pause. Proverbs yes. 23, 31 says it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Look uh, not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth for his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Okay, okay let, let's hold it right there. We'll, 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 we'll be right back. We'll be right back, I promise. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, Pastor Barry, let's go ahead. Yeah, I just, Explain the verse. I just want to look at Proverbs chapter uh, 23. It says here, and uh, Patrick was reading for us. Patrick, read, read that again for us. 33. Mm -hmm. Then it says, Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. That's now, now, that's very important. The Bible said, Thy eyes shall behold what? Strange women. Now, that's talking about those who have been drinking, drinking strong, strong drink. Right. Strong drink. Right. Now, I just wanted right. to say that because the Bible says that in the world, Solomon is giving a good illustration. In the world, when we are drunk at the bar or whatever, we can be. We need to be careful because we can. Or in the church. In the church, but right now, just in the world, <laughs> okay. you you need to be careful because you can your eye you can get so your senses can become so distorted that you will look upon strange women. Mm -hmm. Now God gives these things as acted illustrations in life to, to explain a spiritual meaning and give clarity to it. 
If you can get drunk and your senses can become so numb, you'll be looking at strange women, then obviously then you can get drunk, spiritually speaking, and be looking at strange women. Churches. Or strange churches. Fallen churches. Or strange teachings or strange doctrines to go with it. All right? But now, what's a woman in the Bible? A woman is represented as a church. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Revelation, we have two churches. We have a pure church that's represented by a woman with the sun on her head and a moon under her feet. Revelation and then in 12. Revelation 17, we have a corrupt woman or a harlot. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible calls a strange woman, a strange woman is a harlot. All right? So I just want to just I want to make that clear. A strange woman is what? A harlot, a harlot or a prostitute. All right. Mm -hmm. Revelation 17 is showing you a woman that's a strange woman that sit upon many waters and she's got the kings of the earth and she's committing what? Fornication. Oh, she's looking at a church that's 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 parlaying with the kings of the earth. That's the state. And at the same time, she's bringing the church and the state together through her fornication. She's connected with the state and with the church. You're talking about fornication, relationship. Relationship. Okay, verse 5, it's talking what Pastor Perry is talking about. Just in case somebody want to read it, so it, nobody will think that Revelation we are 17, creating this, five, right? making creating. this up. Right. It's right there. Calling this woman a harlot. Revelation read, 17, The woman five. having the golden cup on his, her hand. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay. And, and, and we study in previous programs that one of the greatest abominations, the greatest abomination, according to Ezekiel, chapter 8, was the worshiping of the sun. Remember that? Yes. We, we, we expand into that. A church should be married to Jesus and depend on him, but when a church loses the power of the gospel, it turns to the power of the state and gets and gets a church state system. To enforce their traditions mm -hmm. or teachings, they have to go to the state. That's right. That yeah. cannot be a church of God there. Yeah. Now why would this why would this power bring wrath and why would the kings of the earth become drunk with her wine? Because there's something in her hand. What does she have in her hand? Her six? The yes. golden cup. She has a golden cup. What does the Bible say about that golden cup? Does God mention anything about a golden cup and who and a and a and a, and a hand of somebody? Um, Remember Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. Does Jeremiah yeah. mention it? Man, right. no, notice here a golden cup. It tells you who was who had the golden cup. Okay, let's let's uh, then uh, the Bible tells us about that, and I want to just show you. Look at here in Jeremiah fifty-one seven. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Wow. Right. They're talking about the old Babylon. Old Babylon. And also oh, an application to the spiritual, spiritual Babylon, Babylon right. for this end time. Because Jeremiah 51, 7 goes hand to hand with Revelation 17, 4 yes. and 5. You can read, right. read Revelation 17, 4 and 5 again. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Revelation 17, mm -hmm. 4 and 5 says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon. Oh, so this is spiritual Babylon with a golden cup, like ancient Babylon had a right. golden cup. Now, can I ask a question? Yes. Because uh, I have read, I was taught that this Babylon of in Revelation 17, 4, and 5, it was representing pagan Rome. And you can read any commentary in, in, in Catholic Bibles. I, I was looking for my Catholic Bible. Uh, read verse I, 1. I don't have it over here. But I, I can, you know, I, I have brought it. I have read it, you know, in programs like this. They say mm -hmm. that this is an application. They say people like us misapply those verses. They say, yes, it, it was applied to Rome, but not to paper, not to the Roman church. It was to pagan Rome. Now, the question to the two of you is this. Why we cannot go along with those commentary that Catholic theologians and even Protestants are maybe doing nowadays? I don't know. I mean, 
Okay. Because the scripture, in the, in the, con in the context yeah. of the scripture, yeah. is talking about ancient Babylon. That's number one. Which was before uh, 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 Jeremiah. the first in Jeremiah. That's but, the first world empire. Yeah, but Revelation 17. And Revelation 17. Why cannot be applied to pagan Rome? That's it, my question. It cannot be applied to pagan Rome because first of all, we're dealing with spiritual Babylon. Okay. That's first. That's first of all. Now, ancient Babylon. Now, there's one thing anciently that you need to keep in mind: that ancient Rome, in the chapter and the and among the seven churches in the Church of Pergamos, mm -hmm. the Pergamum. The, per, the teachings of Pergamum, mm -hmm. the per, the, the, which was the worship of idol gods, was transferred, their seat was transferred to pagan Rome. Okay. All right? This is why when you go to Revelation chapter 3, you read where it said that, that, the, that Antipas, my faithful martyr, where, he, where, it's, where Satan's seat was. Okay. The ancient mystery teachings uh, that was from, the, from Babylon, which was in, the, was, was in Pergamum. And, and today we have what is known as the Pergamum Museum. Mm -hmm. And they brought, the, they, bring the Perg they brought all the gods of Pergamum. And at the one time they were in Rome. They yeah, were that, that museum is they right in from, Berlin. That's right. I saw it. They went mm -hmm. from okay. Babylon to Pergamum That's right. to Rome. That's right. From right. Babylon to Pergamum to Rome. So right. this is why they kind of like point to that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that doesn't hold water because we're talking about spiritual Babylon right. in Revelation chapter 17. And okay. spiritual Babylon here refers none of it refers to the same has the same characteristics as ancient Babylon had, mm -hmm. which was the mystery religion, Pontifus Maximus pointing to the Nebuchadnezzar as being Pontifus Maximus in his day, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about spiritual Babylon, and it's talking about the Pope of Rome who also takes on the term Pontifus Maximus. Anciently, the ancient Babylonian leader, but Nebuchadnezzar was known as a bridge builder. Anciently, modern time, more modern times in spiritual Babylon, the Pope of Rome is also known as a bridge builder. Well, but, but those who apply or try to apply this to pagan, to this Babylon, to pagan Babylon, to pagan Rome, uh -huh. they say that the emperor also, they claim that they were Pontifex Maximus. Yeah, they all, so, they all claimed it, but that was, yeah. remember, Pontifex Maximus means they were head of church and head of state. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. Verse 1, it says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. We've been talking about the seven last plagues. This is one of the seven plague angels okay. that came and talked with me. And he says, Come hither. Okay. And he's coming, putting John into the future. And yeah. it's, right. it, this same angel later on shows John the New Jerusalem coming right. down. And the New Jerusalem doesn't come down in pagan Rome's day. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. Right. It, mm -hmm. the, the whole chapter of Revelation 17. Yes. It is bringing under the context for this end time. Yes. yes. When was the big, when was the end of the pagan Rome Empire? Pagan Rome Empire Around. ended in 168 Four BC. Century? 476 AD. 476, okay. right. Okay. So started in 168. That's an argument. I mean, because I used to believe those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That this was talking about pagan Rome. But when somebody, you know, Show it to me. But the problem, the context the, the, is for the, this the, end time. The context for the end time too, yeah. because it says in verse five, yeah. and upon her forehead was a name written, yeah. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Right. Pagan Rome did not have any. She was not the mother of harlots. Right. She was an empire, political yeah. empire. Period that ruled the world. Right. And how can pagan Rome be? making fornication with the kings of the earth. They didn't do that. It, 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 it was already part of the kings of the yeah. earth. They were the okay. rulers. So yeah. all these arguments, I hope, uh, or uh, interpretation, I hope that will help so many friends but out there. But it's only one more thing here. Okay. Pagan Rome, this, this, this spiritual Babylon in Revelation 17 is charged with blasphemy. Mm. It has the names of blasphemy. She has the same names of blasphemy as the beast of Revelation 13. Mm -hmm. Blasphemy, according to the scriptures, pagan Rome could not bla did not blaspheme in the true sense of the term. This is referring to a power that understands the, to understands the word of God and go against the word of God. Mm. And, and takes on the prerogatives of God himself. This, and, is a, this is, again, magnifying the issue of Antichrist, can, can we, one who's in the place can, of Christ. Can we give a couple of... Uh, more characteristic on, on blasphemy. Okay, let's, blasphemy. let's, let's, let's one, one other thought. Oh, what? Uh, Jeremiah, uh, Revelation 21, verse 9. Mm. 
And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and mm -hmm. talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Right. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So if Revelation 17, 1 is in John's day, then this verse is in John's day. Okay. But we know that both verses are in the last days, and okay. both right. are plague angels. In Mark 2, 20, in Mark 2, 7, on the issue of name of blasphemy, right, right. Okay. Mark so 2, 7, it says, Why doeth this man speak blasphemies? Mm. Who can forgive sins but God only? Okay. All right. So, so, so again, uh, was pagan Rome pretending to forgive the sins of the people? No. Or was no. the papal Rome that established that? That was papal I mean, Rome. That, that, papal okay, Rome claimed okay. that. Okay. Not only that, what is the what is the name bla, name of blasphemy? It says in Mark, we gave you this one. Okay, who can forgive sins? In John ten thirty two and twenty three. John ten thirty two and thirty three. Remember, John ten thirty two and thirty three. Can you read it, please? Jesus Quickly. answered, "Many good works have I showed you." Mm -hmm. from my father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou being a man, maketh thyself a god. Hmm. So are you talking god. about that the leader of the Romish church has pretend to be God? The Bible defines blasphemy as assuming any rights or powers that belong to God alone. Someone who would claim to forgive sins and be uh, claim to be divine? Mm. Yes. In fact, listen to this. This is taken from Catholic National, July 1895. Okay, read, read it quickly, please. The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, but he is Jesus Christ hidden under the veil of flesh. Mm. The Pope is, as it were, God on earth, wow. entrusted by the omnipotent God direction, not only in earthly, but also in, heaven, in the heavenly kingdom. Mm. Whatever the Lord God himself and Redeemer is said to do, that his vicar does. Hence, the Pope is crowned with the triple crown of King of Heaven and Earth and of the lower regions. What Fares, is the source? This is Ferez Ecclesiastical Dictionary article on the Pope. It's also taken from Catholic National, July 1895. My time is up. Our time is up. That's concluded today. Uh, inviting all of you to seek the Lord as never before. Because, yes, the closer we're getting to the end, we will see all this power giving making the whole world drunk with a counterfeit wine or counterfeit gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the one that will set us free. God bless you. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.